at APS, we are grateful for the scientific expertise, the dedication and the passion of all our members. But we would like to specifically celebrate and show our gratitude to the formulators and the heroes in that particular area of science because they're such an integral part to bringing life-saving medicines to patients around the world. And today we really would like to highlight some of these examples of our AAPS members who work in this field, who are many, and tell a little bit of the story of how key the formulation process is to life-saving drug development. I think it is not exaggeration to say that as a formulation scientist, our mission is to turn discoveries into medicine. The, the work that I've been most proud of is actually involving uh, supporting manufacturing of a, what we call an orphan drug, which is defined as drugs that actually uh, are needed by less than 100,000 patients around the world. So it's only for the very few, but those, for those few patients, the, the, the medication it is depending on it for survival. And many of these patients have genetic disorder. And so without the medication, they will not live long. So we are delivering drugs using uh, nanotechnology and microtechnology uh, we are de delivering drugs to, to the retina for, for to treat inflammation of, of the retina. And we have been very successful there. Uh, this is just a formulation technique. We have used the same drug as people have been using, uh, have been injecting into the eye. And we have formulated it with this nanotechnology. And we have been able to deliver, deliver them topically to the barcode eye. Pure formulation technology, replacing needles in the eye with eye drops. So we are formulating scaffolds which have good cell adhesion characteristics. They can release agents that promote tissue formation. And these scaffoldings are made out of polymers that are very porous. And so when cells are migrating through them, which can come from the patient, they proliferate and divide throughout that matrix. And as the matrix is being populated by those cells, the drugs are being released to help the cells convert into the cell types that we're interested in. The scaffold itself is dissolving away over time. You're left with just the tissue that can be then transplanted into a patient. Natural products have many limitations to use them in pharmaceutical industry, like complexity and low solubility. So in our work, we are trying to use nanotechnology to develop new formulations based on nano particles that can deliver the natural product easily in a good soluble form that can reach the site of target in our body. Hot melt extrusion, we can um, create a very fine dispersion here between the truck compound and the carrier. Usually we are using um, dedicated polymers um, as carriers. This pairs the usually crystalline compound in its amorphous form. And by embedding these individual molecules in the polymeric matrix, then we can enhance their solubility and create an uh, amorphous solid dispersion. But the ones that I'm really excited about is that the ones that actually um, you see have an impact on patients. Um, my cousin passed away from um, lymphoma. And one of the products that we worked on, Bendamustine, is the one that I worked on and it's used for to treat lymphomas. To be able to say that you work on a product and that can potentially be helpful and treat cancer patients is very gratifying. Boston's a case study where essentially we took a, a compound that had been that had been into first in human into a single ascending dose with a different company and it had failed due to poor exposure. We, we took the compound, we reformulated it, we tested 
three different uh, enhanced formulation technologies. We tested them in one clinical study, selected the best formulation, and then was able to dose escalate to give us safety margins to progress to a multiple ascending dose. So formulation is key, definitely. The pediatric patients constitute over 80% of total malaria patients. Many of these uh, endemic countries are in high temperature, high humidity regions in the world. And so what we develop usually are, you know, oral solid dosage forms that are either hot tablets or disposable forms that can be reconstituted at point of administration to the patients. At AAPS, we are extremely grateful to our formulator members who are making such a big difference to get life-saving medicines to patients around the world.